I've never seen it. I just started, I was just telling Aristotle, maybe two days before Brian had reached out to me, re-watching Futurama, and it's so funny. You like Futurama? I love Futurama. That's cool, you know, um, it's rebooted. It's coming back. It is? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, and I, I co-wrote an episode with my son, Ari, who's a stand-up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's so fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm, get, I, I'm getting back. It's... uh insanely underratedly shoved full of jokes well that's the thing is it always seemed like almost like like why isn't this a joke <laughs> yeah. you know why isn't every line a joke why isn't every sign in the background a joke and we'd be there till like five o'clock in the morning pitching on some like the name of some IRS agent right you know? <laughs> every little thing <laughs> is well I was watching an episode um I just started all the way back over, and it's like maybe episode seven or eight where they have to push like a – Fry has to push a button to blow up a bomb or something, mm -hmm. and he just misses the button reaching for a big red button. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, that's as funny as something could be. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's a giant red button, and he misses it, and he goes, oh, sorry, and then he pushes the button. I'm just like, yeah, that's zero time added to an episode to just make every part Cram funny. Cram everything with jokes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so mm -hmm. funny. I like that. I like it. Oh, okay. Thanks, Aristotle. It's just, I don't know. We t it's funny, and it's funny to be funny, and it's good. And Aristotle and I were talking about how it also had, like, the, the finale was so wonderful as well. And then Which finale? Stuff. There have been four. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 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 uh, but I love it so much, and I've been having a good time rewatching it. I think I'm, like, 10, 12 episodes in at this yeah, point. Yeah, well, you know, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had a funny. Um, I created the character of the Hypno Toad. I love Hypno Toad. And suddenly, the Hypno Toad experienced this resurgence because um, some college football team, the Horny Frogs, had taken the Hypno Toad as their mascot. <laughs> oh, though TCU. And then, yeah. And guess guess <laughs> yeah. who beat them in the national championship? Georgia? The Georgia Bulldogs. Rob's from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I got real aggressive. <laughs> I'm basically an honest person, but the most dishonest I think I've ever been in my life was when I'm interviewed by Sports Illustrated trying to pretend I know what's going on or care okay. about college okay. football. Were they like, asking you like about the hypnotoad and stuff? Oh, yeah. They, I was interviewed all around the globe because of the hypnotoad, and I couldn't <laughs> say that, like, I felt it would be rude to say, like, zero interest. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it would have been, like, for a spicier, it might have made for a spicier. Sure, um, yeah. You Peace. had beef with TCU? Just not interested. <laughs> not interested. Didn't aware. Didn't know till you called me that there was a team called TCU. <laughs> That's so fun. I mean, yeah, I think they wanted you to hate those children. <laughs> I was like, just we like. We really want Eric to get mad at these teams. No, I just said. I, I have occasionally been the heel wrestler with nerds. Like, I did get up at a Big Bang panel at Comic-Con mm -hmm. and say, I don't like Star Wars. And you guys are Whoa. too. You're you like guys escorted are, out. You guys are too old. Like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> watch. You know, read my brilliant friend by Elena Ferrante. Read something that's not about, you know, good guys and bad guys fighting each other with toys. <laughs> and it, I get, I got a very pro wrestler. It's like this is what it's like to be a pro wrestler because like, you just stand there. And yeah, like, yeah. I bet every like, Ooh. that Venn diagram of people that love Futurama and Star Wars. That middle is huge. It's pretty yeah. big. It's pretty big. <laughs> I don't think there's anything more fun, and I've heard some wrestlers actually talk about it. We're like, being like over is fun, but being a heel is the most fun thing you could probably do. I think do. so, because we all kind of like, we hate the fact that we have to not be true to ourselves to get people to like us. Yeah. And then you get to just like throw that away and just be like, I don't care that you all are going to hate me. And then you can yeah. lean in. Ah, you can lean, and then you can be feels honest. Good. <laughs> they won't even. The key doesn't mean what he's saying. He's just being yeah. a heel, and you're like, I kind of mean everything yeah. that I'm saying. He's just leaning in. I heard a funny story about Andre the Giant, that he was walking to some. He was. He, it was in Boston, and he was walking to the venue, and some some kid was like, Andre, I hate you. I hate you. And he's like, Fuck you. <laughs> <kid."> <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and we don't get to do that in our lives. No, but obviously, <laughs> right. obviously, be fun. Your right? whole persona, you can't succeed and make money if your persona is hating everyone unless you're like a wrestler yeah, or you, you've already succeeded and yeah and, and it helps if in. you're eight feet tall right? yeah that's true yeah. you're already attracting a certain amount of negative attention oh, and fear <laughs> i i bigger imagine than be me. very <laughs> gratifying if you've had to be good like a good whatever version of a wrestler that is the whole time like you're like stone oh, to cold do Steve your Austin, heel turn? to then get to yeah. do the massive heel turn and yeah. just say everything you've thought the entire Absolutely. time and completely lean in and just it, for him then everyone just loved him more. It was he was like so popular like really? Steve, mm-hmm. Stone Cold Steve Austin anyways, right. where he couldn't even be the bad guy because then everyone's like I like bad guys now. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like yeah. I like the bad guy. Like if Han Solo became a bad guy, everyone's like, well, but I like that guy. Yeah, the most. I like that guy. Yeah. Well, also Stone Cold's enemy was his boss. Yeah. So who's not gonna like the guy <laughs> yeah. that can like? He's like, now I hate the fans and boss. my boss. And everyone's like, good, we hate our boss. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I bet that is why he was so because he punched his boss he twice a week. Punched his boss and then drank a beer. And then everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect because per- all yeah. the wrestlers fought each other, and he's like, no, no, I'm gonna beat up the boss and his family. Yeah. I'm gonna beat up yeah. the one wearing the suit. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That is impossible to like. Everyone's like, you can do whatever you want. You could beat up my family if you beat up yeah. your boss. Can you beat up my boss? <laughs> <laughs> you hire Stone Cold Steve Austin to come to your work. Um, well, we can uh, – let's talk about uh, Yellow Jackets. Yeah, let's talk uh, about Eric, that. thank you for – I record an intro totally separately, so okay. we can set up a little bit more elaborate. Um, we need to pick parts, man. We do. I told mm-hmm. Rob I've never heard of this, okay. and he asked me – if I avoid billboards, because apparently it's like very well, a good open air marketing campaign. From, really, from uh, what is from Showtime? Okay, mm-hmm. Rob, who were you on the? This is uh, were you yelling about Showtime on the phone while I was printing off scripts? About Showtime? Weren't you like I already have Showtime? Or oh yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> he Rob the took a phone AT&T call. The AT and T person called me to sell. <laughs> they call me every month to sell me Showtime. Uh huh. But I already bought. Uh huh. Showtime anytime for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before I knew like Paramount Plus was gonna start playing all the Showtime stuff, so I'm like, I got enough Showtime. <laughs> I just, I, <laughs> it was the most forward I'd ever heard anyone with a telemarketer. <laughs> you didn't just hang up. You're like, I've already purchased this product, so yeah. stop calling me. <laughs> yeah. Because I want them. Because they'll still be like, No, but it's free, and it's like, No, you don't understand. I already pay for it. Yeah. It is taunting me to give me something free right. yeah. that I already pay for. Yeah. And you will forget that you got it for free and in a year automatically pay for it. Yeah. A second time. I'm not, I don't yeah. want to okay. be double charged for Showtime. <laughs> no one does. <laughs> yeah. Showtime. <laughs> HBO, maybe you could get away with double charging in a couple I, months. I think I might have. I know I regret having Showtime. <laughs> I, and I don't remember what. What it was that horn swoggled me into getting Showtime. They have. I, I'm trying I, to think I of shows it. that were on there. I watch the circus every Sunday. A political show. Okay. They interview Who different congressmen that? and uh-huh. stuff. It's like a like a panel. Like one guy, he he worked on the Bush campaign. Uh, one lady worked on the Hillary campaign. Like it's all like okay. real political. They talk to everybody. Oh, it's in not Congress. just a, it's not just that network's Daily Show. No, okay. no, no. Yeah. This is like serious business, and they they're drinking more and more as as it goes on. It's like, all right, there's a lot more alcohol on this show. <laughs> oh, really? Than there was before. I like that. It, they are stressed out. Yeah. I uh, I yeah, I don't know. I had no idea this was this popular. Yellow Jackets. I thought I when you know we're going through like the list of things. Yeah. And I was like, I, th- I think I've heard of that, and I'm pretty sure it's new. But that's really all I knew about it. I have like no context of if it's of what the yellow. I don't know. I don't want to like. I, I know a single anything. fact about it, <laughs> and I base the script entirely on that fact, and then on on inference. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Rob, have you watched Yellow Jackets? No, but there was a brief time where Yellowstone and Yellow Jackets were the same thing in my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so everything I heard about both of them was just getting mixed like, this together. This is the most yeah. insane sounding show <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah. Yellowstone is a uh, that show's very popular. Why do pe- why do people like that? That baffles me. I don't know. There's something that's crazy. My dad, who is just you know. A almost seventy year old man. Yeah, he's about to turn six. He just turned sixty nine, and he's living okay. in in Missouri. Okay, even he was like, it, he's like, I tried to watch Yellow Jackets, or not, I tried Yellowstone. Kind of felt like nothing. 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, but you're exactly who they want to like tune in mm-hmm. while it's on the air for the com- – because my dad will just watch a show with the com- – you know, he sits and watches for the hour that it's on with the commercials on CBS or whatever it is. Uh-huh. He's like – I think Nielsen thinks my dad is everyone, <laughs> when in reality there's 16 of him left. Mm. <laughs> and But even he was oh, like – Oh, there's more than 16 of Yeah, there are. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> Old people watch Westerns. Both my grandmothers yeah. all day long, all they want to see people on horseback. So it's just, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about their time. They they didn't even grow up in, you know, right. on a it's horse. It's not like they're 108 when Westerns were like. No, my grandmother just turned 94. And like, like when Stars got rid of the Western channel for a second, she was like upset. Like we got to do something. <laughs> like She's protesting grit. Stars. Uh, TV Land, like she know, somehow she doesn't know anything else going on, but where the westerns are. Okay, hmm. yeah. So then Yellowstone is for her. So it Yellowstone, Western, right? it might be for that community. Like we know y'all like westerns. We know y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to hear all this. You know, TikTok mumbo jumbo. Sure. <laughs> you know, y'all don't want to hear all this. You know, in Yellowstone, yeah. Ronald Reagan's still president. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys and Indians with cell phones. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? It's a very famous person who's the star of Yellowstone. Kevin Costner. Kevin, Co- Kevin Costner. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, think yeah. he's just been waiting for that? I feel like they might shoot that at his house. <laughs> I just assume wherever he lives is like he was the first celebrity to buy too much land in Wyoming or something like that. <laughs> um, but Yellow Jacket. And he either. doesn't need to know what the character is because he no. knows the character is him. It's him. Just yeah. it's Kevin Cosner. So mm-hmm. can we make my character say "Dances with Wolves" holds up over and over again? Is there <laughs> a way we can get my character to say that? By the way, I bet the negotiation. I can be the negotiator for the executive producer of Yellowstone with Kevin Cosner. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because they're just picturing the poster. That, All yeah. they need is the billboard. Ke- Kevin Cosner is going to be in my thing about a fan. Yeah, yes. sure. Yeah. Yeah. What does he want? Give it to him. <laughs> Doesn't does not matter. Uh, no. Is it on CBS? It's on. It's on no. Paramount. It's, yeah. Really? Movie. It's channel. on a weird thing. Oh man, I don't. Yeah. My parents don't have a credit card, so and I don't then, know how they sign up for that. But then the reruns are on Peacock. And the new really? episodes are on Paramount Plus. It's you like, like know everything about the streaming stuff. You hey, do. I I try to keep up with what's going. I used to be the kid like TV guy. Like let me watch that. Oh what? Let me while see it what, scrolled. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> Let's see what's where. Let's see how y'all organizing this. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> the math of the TV guide <laughs> channel. Uh, I remember I would watch the TV guide, and if you just missed what you're looking for, mm-hmm. you're waiting for it to go through like 80 more oh, channels no. very slowly to get back to <laughs> yeah. like. Nickelodeon Channel 27, mm-hmm. I think. Okay. Yellow okay. Jackets. Okay, Yellow Jackets. We are <laughs> off the rails. Um, okay. Yellow Jack is here. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Um, what Do you want to say what you knew going in? Is there anything you want? Or does it, is it a part of it? We can, we'll can cast it up however you'd like to cast it okay. up. Okay. Okay. I'd like to be Lexi. Okay. You guys can take the remaining parts. Okay. Um, Rob, do you want to be Alexa? Sure. I'll take anyone else as they come up. I feel like it's an Alexi and Lexa. It is. Alexa and Lexa. It's sort of a two-hander. So if anyone else pops up, I'll take them. Oh, who reads the stage directions? Um, you can do that. I'll read it the stage It feels like directions. it's dialogue-driven, okay. so I think it is. Be it is dialogue-driven. Um, um, is there anything, any any I knew this going in, anything like that you want to give away? Well, or? why don't I say that at the end? Okay, perfect. Uh, that, will be a, that, will be, that will be a quiz for the listener. Um, I, what I knew about this show can be expressed in a single sentence and see if you can deduce from like the script this. what okay. that oh, sentence is. I like this is. a lot. Okay. We, this show is about the game. So let's, all right, let's do Life it. is about the game, man. We, we all, all three of us know that. It is about at least some 90s movie. Some 90s movie, sure. <laughs> uh, all right, whenever you're All ready. right, Yellow Jackets. Lexi and Alexa are hanging out in Alexa's pad. We need to talk about what happened on the island, Alexa. What part exactly? You know. Um. Don't be cute with me, Lexi. I can still hear her voice at night in my dreams. Alexandra? Who else? What does she say? Why did you eat my ass, Lexi? (laughs) 
Why did you make ass pudding out of my ass and then eat it? Why? 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 We had no choice, Lexi. I know that. We would have starved to death when we and our teammates crashed on that island. <sighs> but I still feel... I don't know. Bad? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bad. You know she agreed to it. She did? Yeah. I said to her, Alexandra, we and our teammates are not going to make it out of here alive if we don't eat something. So what if we take off your ass and make an <laughs> ass pudding and eat that? And then we'll keep you alive. And when you get back to civilization, you'll be on TV and be a hero. Huh. I did not know she had agreed to that. Well, she did. Oh. Hmm. Well, when I saw her lying there assless and whatnot, I, I just went hum, 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 hum on the rest of her till, <laughs> till there was none left. I remember you doing that. Kind of broke my agreement. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Bad. That's why I feel guilty. I I can't sleep. I keep feeling like I have bits of her between my teeth. Uh, it's really upsetting. I'm sorry. How should I deal with this guilt? I've got an idea. Cool. What? We call Andre 3000. <laughs> Get out! You know Andre 3000? Yeah. Why didn't you ever mention it? I didn't want to seem like I was name dropping. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I, I still would have liked it if he like came to my party. He's a big celebrity, Lexi. He's married to Erica Badu. He's not going to come to your party. Come on. Let's call him up and see his take on this whole cannibalism thing. Hey, Andre. Yeah, what's up? So this is going to be really weird, and you cannot tell anybody, but <laughs> can I get your advice on something? Yeah, sure. My friend and I, we're like female college athletes together, and, well, <laughs> there's no nice way to say this in order to stay alive. We resorted to cannibalism. We ate. This girl, this one girl, Alexandra, I just ate her ass, but Lexi went hom, 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 hom <laughs> on the rest of her. Oh, can I talk to him? Andre? Yeah. Uh, I really, really love Heya. Oh, thanks. Um, so, uh, 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 how bad is it <laughs> that I ate my friend Alexandra? Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not great. Oh. But look, everybody makes mistakes. If you promise never to eat anybody ever again, I think you're cool. And I'll keep your secret. Thanks, Andre. You're the best. So, my birthday party, it's coming up. And <laughs> it, it would really mean a lot to me if... Hello? You good? Yeah. It's nice to let go of the weight. <laughs> Live my life. Not constantly have to hear Alexandra's desperate, pathetic cries echoing in my ears as I go, hum, 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 hum on her face. Yeah. The only thing is, well... Spit it out, Alexa! When we were rescued, they gave us all a medical exam. Uh, I, I remember. Um, s some of us had um, pretty uh, severe uh, dermatitis uh, from the exposure. I know. True. But that <laughs> tetakinazola cream was quite effective. But more importantly, they took a stool sample, and I just got the results. They found blonde hair in our BMs. We could eat our own hair. That proves nothing. They found bones. Could have been whale bones. And they found Alexandra's engagement ring in your stool sample. Oh, no. 
That looks really bad. Don't freak. I got the address of the coroner. He's releasing the report tomorrow. If the traffic on the freeway is reasonable, we can get there in time. To the cannibal mobile! <laughs> we cut to the interior of a coroner's office. Knock, knock, knock. The coroner's doing coroner stuff and whatnot. <clears throat> Hello. Lexi and Alexa come in and kill him with hammers. <laughs> How do we dispose of the body? <laughs> I've got an idea. Alexa takes out a fork. <laughs> Great minds think alike! <laughs> we cut to later. Lexi and Alexander have finished eating the coroner. They burp. <clears throat> oh, man. I am stuffed. I cannot eat another bite. So good. What did you do with the dick that made it so good? Just garlic, salt, and pepper. You are a genius. Alexa, oh no. What? We told Andre 3000, and we promised we wouldn't eat anybody else. And we did. What can we do? I don't know, Lexi. I, I literally could not eat another bite. Got it. What? We'll ask if we can take Andre 3000 to go. And we fade out. <laughs> All right, guys. So I spent the whole script trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out what could have possibly been in the show from this. Yeah. <laughs> Cannibalism? Yes. Yes. You figured that out. <laughs> I figured I, I deduced this would, that. This would be an, a... a a wild libel. I would love. <laughs> I would love the swing if what you took was like I knew one girl's name Lexi, and no. the rest was of my own imagination. No. no, what I knew was this is the story of female athletes who crashed on an island and resorted to cannibalism and are returning to civilization and dealing really? with the results. Yes, I knew that. Oh my god. This show sounds crazy. Like yeah, that, that sounds, sounds awesome. Nuts. <laughs> yeah, this is a show I had no about idea. about college athletic women who eat at least one. Now we're getting out of my area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate not being typecasted, but I think I could have did a good Andre three thousand. <laughs> I saw Rob yesterday in yeah. an Andre three thousand T-shirt. <laughs> Oh, is that right? Literally. <laughs> like, actually 13 hours ago. <laughs> and I saw Kyle in the same shirt he's wearing. It is oh, really? the same sweatshirt. I put it back on. Yeah, it is. I wish shirts hadn't come up. I like this sweatshirt. Yeah. I only wore it to the show yesterday. I thought yeah, I could wear no. it. Yeah, no. You might have multiple. I Your don't. closet might be a cartoon <laughs> Like, I'm Doug mm -hmm. Funny. Yeah, this yeah. is my white, <laughs> my cream-colored sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I, is Andre 3000 in the show? I don't believe so. No. <laughs> That's, I do not believe he is. I'm in this such film. like a not a, a, one. The second it was done, my first thought was, okay, so he knew Andre three thousand was in it. Yeah, and then I was like, no, it's probably the cannibalism. Thing. No, I I thought he seems like a good um, representative of of moralism of morality. Okay, <laughs> that, that if you went to okay. him and he said you're cool, that you might be willing to think, okay, I'm cool, because I figure that what this show must be about is struggling with the guilt mm -hmm. of having transgressed. I assume Yellow the taboo. Jackets is like their mascot. I'm gonna say they're I probably like the, I don't know the something. The Do you know Georgia why it's Tech called, Yellow Jackets? Why is it called like Yellow Jackets? I don't know. I also don't know if they're Australian. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. But oh, they, we were supposed to be Australian? No, I, I did not write them as Australian because <laughs> I didn't know if they were. I just do Andre 3000 as Australian. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if they were Australian, then my goof, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> that sounds like a crazy show. Why yeah. didn't the billboard say that? Because the bill, it's all about mystery. Yeah. You know, it's like no people on it. It just says yellow jackets. But I didn't didn't you watch it because bees. of the billboard. There's bees on the billboard? I guess I didn't see the billboard. Yeah. I don't know anything about how to get people to watch a show, but if, if you hinted at me that if, if that tagline was on the billboard, I would have signed up. I like a good no information billboard. I like a good, like, interesting picture. This is what time it comes on. This is the name of it. Hmm. 
Okay. Mm. I I need so much information. <laughs> I'm I, like, I, 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 I rewatch shows that I liked. It's hard for me. You have to really sell me on a new television show because there's so much time invested. Yeah. And I know that if I already liked it, like like Futurama mm-hmm. or something, and Futurama is almost a show where like I can get watch a whole other show and then get back to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's you have to really, really sell me on a show, and it's hard for me to. It's really, truly hard for me to watch a new show. I don't know why. It's hard. I tried to. I watched like 15 minutes of Poker Face, and right. that's the most of anything new that I've watched in a long while, as far as like a whole new thing. But Poker Face, I put in the same world of Yellow Jackets, which I just call billboard shows. Right. Where I'm just like, I really only knew about this because all the billboards. Mm-hmm. Well, what I know about Poker Face is it has Natasha Lyonne, who was in Russian Doll and created Russian Doll, mm-hmm. and it has Ryan Johnson connected to it somehow, and he made that great movie Brick. Mm-hmm. So I think if I was going to ever watch a show, that might be one it that I would watch. It was cool feeling. It, that, it definitely cool felt feeling. like the two of them collab. Like the tone was, I love Ryan Johnson. You like the tone. I love the tone. I, prob- I might even keep watching it. I think I just forgot what it was on. And, right. Uh, so then I just, you know watched uh, uh, we've been doing a thing where I, i'm trying to watch like i'm watching all these movies and making my way through so that takes up time all too. these movies we're doing like a march badness where i went through and tried to find like an aggregate of the least well-reviewed like irredemptively not even hate watched sort uh-huh, of movies uh-huh. okay and i'm making my way through and i just watched Gotti. sure and because it is it has not a single favorable review interesting why because if you watch it it is. It is not irredemptively. You you like you laugh at some of it existing, mm-hmm. and then you look into the movie, and Gotti is essentially leaned on by the Gotti family, like they showed up on set, they picked John Travolta, oh. they were very much involved with the production, oh. and you watch the movie, and you're just like, oh, this is a puff piece for oh, him to look cool. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Where wow. he everything he says is like. Every line he says is the equivalent of, and I'm just doing all of this for my family. He was doing and it I for go his through family. all of this. But like huh. having watched the Sopranos and like what feels like a more accurate representation. Right, right. I'm watching Gotti thinking, no, no, there's a lot of sad downtime to being in the mob. Uh-huh. And not uh-huh. everything is like this is so what is it, romanticized? Sure. Okay. And so insane. And then you look it up and it's like the Gotti family picked John Travolta and was involved uh-huh. and you're like, oh, that makes perfect fucking sense. Right. Like right. it is it is a movie. Where it it is almost like if they got to write his Wikipedia page. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He doesn't do anything wrong. And then it cuts to, like, tons of shots of people being like, we love him in our neighborhood. He's good for the neighborhood. And then at one point he's, like, mad at his kid for wanting to be a cop. And I'm like, maybe I like Gotti. Like, maybe he is a good guy. Now, wait a second. Wouldn't the producers have wanted to get John Travolta anyway? Why did they need to get casting advice? I don't He's think. A major <laughs> I, star. I don't even know if it ever got to like we're getting advice. I think the Gotti family was like, if you want to make it, he will be Gotti, and they're like, yeah, okay, like. It, <laughs> but I, so, so the the Gotti family intimidated John Travolta into. doing I don't this? know if he wanted to do it or not. I don't know. I don't know if they intimidated or if they were just like, we'll only help, we'll only let you know, about, give you our dad's story or whatever if it's John Travolta. And then everyone's like, that's fine. I don't know if there was any resistance. Wow. I don't know what it was. But it is, you know how you can watch a movie and you're just like, too many cooks, sure. right? You're like, this, mm-hmm. there's too well, many people. And, and, and if one of the cooks, if they're. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. If, <laughs> I'm just going to say they're, 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 they're strong suit. Is breaking people's bones right. rather mm-hmm. than they, giving scripts. Their strong suit notes. in the kitchen is yeah. knife work. Yeah, and it is not cooking. Yeah. <laughs> they just very much. I mean, a hundred times in the movie, he says, "This life is only for making things better for my family." Right. And he right. he has two camera breaking the fourth wall, uh-huh. talking sometimes, okay. including the open and close of the movie. And it closes with him going, "If you live five thousand years, you'll never meet another guy like me." And then music uh. plays. Wow. It's uh it's confusing. None of it makes sense, but it is fascinating that it exists. Yeah. So I don't think it will move on in my least redemptive like watching. I I have to watch what is it going against? Oh, Jaws 4. Oh. Okay. So okay. so I I just can't fathom Jaws 4 being more watchable. I think everyone watching Jaws 4 is going to say this film is very flat. 
yeah. because they've been taught by Jaws 3 that the shark is a three-dimensional being that will come at you in three dimensions. They've learned to expect three-dimensionality in their mm-hmm. shark movies. <laughs> it's been yanked away. This 2D insanity. And they're back in a 2D yeah. world. Do you think Michael Caine has in his script or in his like contract that he can't be in three dimensions? Oh, one or two. Yeah, he he will play a point. <laughs> I'll go up yeah. to two dimensions. I will play a point. Um, <laughs> um, so that's what it's going against. I don't know what's going to move on there. And, you know, we got a couple others like uh, Left Behind and Staying Alive. And uh, John Travolta made a couple of appearances on the, Interesting. the list. Staying as far as alive. like, I tried to really find, you, you know, because there's a lot of mm. movies that are bad, but then people have a lot of fun watching them. And fun. I don't consider that bad. You wanted to find something that would I'm, provide I'm no like, enjoyment at I'm all. I'm like, what That's is a smart. movie where people were just like, why did this? What? Why? Why? And it's like, uh, look, the uh, Baby Genius is two. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, okay. And it, but poor Travolta. I mean, he's doing fine. You Staying know, Alive is directed by Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I know. I, I, <laughs> doing any research for these movies, you're just like, when did this go wrong? Like, hit a spin when you dance. Um, like, why did <laughs> letting Gotti's family write a movie about him? How did that end up bad? Those prof- it, That is a whole plot in The Sopranos. Right. Is and their involvement in it movies. Is, it is a little bit like... Um, Oh, I'm being threatened by these morons every day. Well, why are you doing? It? Oh, leaf show business. Like, why do you? Why do you want to do this? Why? Why? Why not just do something else with yeah. your time on Earth and create a puff piece for John Gotti <laughs> during which you're actually afraid? Yeah. That. I mean, it's not. It's not funny to have your bones broken because it's not just. Oh, it hurts. You have to go to PT a couple mm-hmm. times a week just uh-huh. because you didn't yeah. make Gotti right. Yeah, and, and then, then you're embarrassing because your pers- your like physical therapist yeah. is in Hollywood, so they know all about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and that's just I. I really don't. I mean, you know, kind of her. I don't want to get a serious physical injury because I'm busy and I don't want to have to make time for for PT. <laughs> that's true. I broke yeah. my foot and it slowed a lot of things. It down. was very uncomfortable. It was also, uncomfortable. Right? People, if you're looking, at, if you're like on the fence about having your foot broken, yeah, yeah. don't. Yeah. If you're and if you're on a fence, get off of it because you might break your foot. Yeah. Oh, I started to watch Fight Club last night, and I kind of it did kind of make me wonder about the physical therapy and health plan characteristics of like suddenly hundreds of people are coming into the emergency. <laughs> <laughs> There's watched. one so hospital what in this town uh, that's just like I can't talk about. A it. lot of people have similar injuries. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm running a lot of uh, medical run throughs yeah. because I think. Like, I'm on the Guild health plan. I don't have to pay for people's Fight Club-related injuries. <laughs> <laughs> I think that those are uh, those are excluded. Well, but they're not. They're because not. It's a yeah. real, it's a real, it's, a, it's, the para, it's the free rider paradox because I also don't want to be working with a bunch of people who are all broken in pieces and haven't been fixed sure. by a competent uh, it's orthopedic like, uh, surgeon. Yeah, Tom Cruise having to make his own companies to insure yes. himself. Maybe yes. these people had to do that because no Maybe. one's going to insure going right, and that's space. just that's just the stuff that the director wisely, I'll say, left out of the frame. <laughs> <laughs> Think about all the caseworkers going yes. to people's houses, questioning their innocent family members. Like, yeah. no, he these are clearly from some sort of altercation. The last house I was yeah. at Tell kept chanting happened. Robert Paulson as well. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if there's a through but line didn't, here. Yeah, and and this all happened in the Fight Club universe. But we just weren't shown it. We weren't shown it. Yeah, we weren't shown it in the interest of a of a rousing flick, which I so far it is. I've only seen. A, I'm only about an hour in, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. Oh yeah, no, the last forty minutes is all paperwork. Mm-hmm. I never seen Fight Club. I should watch it. I know. All I know is we don't talk about Fight Club. Sure. And I think soap is involved. Sure. Rob, there's a podcast where you could really, really get some good stuff on paper. About <laughs> I, think so. I think so. <laughs> it's We Don't no, Read no, About I, Fight Club. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> um, I wonder if – so you'd never seen it and you're watching it for the first time? I had right never now? seen it and I'm watching it for the I first time. I think a lot and have, I think, talked on here before about how a, a great deal of the quality of a movie is when – like what age you are and when it comes out. But what yeah. age you are when you see a movie for the first time? Right. Like I have like never seen you, The Goonies. If you see Bergman and you're like a week old. <laughs> right. You were, that's a clear, you're going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. You, well, you won't even be able to articulate those questions because you won't have speech. So so that's a, data, that's a data point in your favor, man. But seeing Fight Club, 
I think I saw Fight Club when I was probably like 17. And you were like that. You were a Fight Club. So you were just like, oh, this is a movie that's invented to make. I, I believe everything you're saying. You're a Fight saying. Club, yeah. There's no irony in the movie yeah, when you're 17 Kyle and you see Yeah, Young Kyle is Fight Club. You're right. like, yeah. You're just like, maybe I should get punched and everything is bad. You know. Yeah. But re-watching it, even in my 30s, I'm like, oh, it's satire. Yeah, satire. But it did not register to me as having like being satire in any capacity because right. i was like 17 18 right movies were new to me as yeah. far as like a movie trying to do something uh, right. was a new idea to me well movies like the technology you knew they weren't real people right you didn't try to reach into the screen and get, get the food fight club was the first one that you realized yeah, it was yeah. not actually once he recovered once, once you thought he... it was a window <laughs> into a place yeah. i thought the train was actually going to run, was me gonna over. run you over yeah that's yeah. frightening, that's frightening. <laughs> First time I saw Ghostbusters when they were in the library and the ghost came out, me and my sister took off running. That was a scary ghost. That was a scary ghost. (laughs) We got out of the room. Yeah. I thought that was going to be a Casper ghost because it was a comedy, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't a Casper ghost. It was a scary, scary ghost. Yeah, yeah. Like skull teeth and shit. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'll see Ghostbusters. That's one I have not seen. Uh, Okay. But yeah, like Fight Club. That's a, I think that's a movie where it can be – I don't think it will become your favorite movie. I don't know if it will or not when you're finished watching it. You didn't watch it all in one sitting. so. Well, one issue about it mm-hmm. is it was spoiled for me. Mm. The big reveal I knew when, oh, yeah. when oh, it was yeah, there is all a, that is a big I knew, thing. all I knew about the movie, mm-hmm. I knew that. And that's unfortunate. I, oh, by the way, I've had movies spoiled for me in two equal and opposite ways. My sister-in-law told me the reveal of Sixth Sense, making it that's no fun, kind of tedious. Yeah. But then somebody told me about some other movie, some other kind of '90s movie, that the detective is actually the killer. And I'm watching the movie, and the detective is solving all this stuff and being like, "Oh, you couldn't have been there. You were over there." Mm-hmm. And 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 I'm like, "Yeah, right." He's not really trying to solve the crime right i know he's actually the bad guy whole different point of view yeah and then he said and then it's you or take her away and then they took her away and then i'm waiting and the movie ended i had been misled <laughs> <laughs> like it's just a f- misdirect spoiler the director <laughs> the director i'm sorry the detective was not <laughs> the bad guy the That's person, so fun. the person, the detective was <laughs> gradually trying to catch, was the bad guy. <laughs> You're like, look and at this detective frame all, that person. All the plot <laughs> events that I ignored because I knew they didn't matter <laughs> mattered. So the movie was completely ruined for me because I imagined <laughs> something was going on that wasn't. It was the flip of um, an... the sixth sense. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is an incredible prank. That's it was hilarious. unfortunate. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that it happened to you, I'm sorry. Yeah. That it happened, I am happy. Yeah, it's interesting. It, it it provides a little peek into what it is that makes a movie enjoyable. And one of it, the things is, I think, if you're if the people making the movie have made you pay attention to the things they want you to pay attention sure. to, that's a step in the right direction <laughs> of an enjoyable movie. Are you listening, friends. Los Angeles? Write this down. Like if I'm one of these people who's just, I don't know, obsessed with the texture of carpets and I'm looking at downfall and I'm just looking about the carpets and I don't think about what it would be like to be Hitler on his last days, I, I've i missed the boat on that <laughs> viewing experience. Like I think that one might actually have been a rug. <laughs> that, well, how did they get that Killeem in there? <laughs> I wonder when uh, Goebbels is going to talk about that. It is wild. Well, he's killing it. himself with his <laughs> wife. He didn't talk about it at all. <laughs> this is a bad strategy for appreciating Is it technically that wall to wall in a bunker? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. It's a good question. So it just means that, that those t- p- pivotal stories like Hitler killing his girlfriend and his dog and himself can be revisited many times. Because there's so much richness. <laughs> there's so there's a lot much of depth richness. to it. Yeah. You could talk about the the home furnishing. You could talk about what this the does dog, for jobs in the, the area. Dog. Oh. Wow, so when, a, I really cannot. Did I can't think about watching, watching Sixth Sense, knowing what happened. What's more disappointing, watching that knowing what happens or watching a movie and what you think is going to happen doesn't? 
Uh, well, both are disappointing. Um, I think having a movie spoiled, particularly um, like the if example an, of a if, spoiler ever, particularly if it's if it's an M Night Shyamalan joint, yeah, where much of the th- artistic virtuosity is setting up the reveal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's not that much great stuff. It's like it's like a bounce house, which you let the air out of. Right. And and really if you think about the stuff to do in a bounce house that's not bounce related, there's very little. Once again it's inspecting there's the elements. Very little. There's very little. <laughs> Even the basketball uh, hoop needs to be inflated. Yeah. So so a deflated bounce house isn't that good. And you could say, oh, I would say on the other hand, like like a fine movie like Kong Skull, Skull Island, I enjoyed on an airplane without listening to it. Hmm. And it was still mm. very enjoyable. Captions or no captions? No captions. No <laughs> captions. I there had, uh, was wow. there was some. I, well, here's what I know about that movie. Uh, th- there's so much great stuff in is that, that the movie. Jack Black is in the Kong. No, no. There's no Jack Black. There's no one you've ever heard of, or at least no one I had ever heard of. Um, <laughs> it was entirely based on monsters. Monsters fight <laughs> each other okay. a lot. Like <laughs> if you're like you're like the ideal age to see this movie is five, but. Uh, it's all. I, yeah. I have enough. Of, it's like almost I, a video game at a skating rink. There's enough in common between me and a five year old that I love this movie <laughs> because um, it, here's a question which you must have had if you've thought about King Kong for even an hour. Which I have. Which okay. is why, why is there only one of them? <laughs> How could there be a species yeah. of which there's only one? <laughs> like, where's Kong's mom? What's going on? <laughs> That's. So, Okay, well, I hadn't thought about that. This but answers that, that question. <laughs> oh, it does? In yes, it answers the question um, because the Earth is hollow, and inside inside the hollow Earth, there are many more giant conks. So only one of them had made it to the one surface. One of them had made it to the surface. I, I, and Now, if you want to know why, you might have to ask someone who watched the movie with the sound on. <laughs> the Earth hasn't been aroused. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. In order for the the Kongs to come out the center of the earth, <laughs> someone's got to turn the earth Wait, on. is this... Now I don't know if you've seen is it that and you're true? actually describing it. <laughs> no, I've okay, never I seen have no Kong idea Skull what's Island. reality anymore. But, you know, <laughs> you tell me it's a bunch of Kongs in the middle of the earth, you know, I, I mean... I want to... No uh, I looked up but... who was in it. It is a bunch of people that you've never heard of. Samuel Jackson. I've heard of Samuel John Jackson. John Goodman. <laughs> John C. John Reilly, Goodman, I've heard of John Larson. <laughs> I've heard of all these people. They play monsters? That's crazy. They're all... No. <laughs> It's them just talking, but I imagine if it's... I think well, it's, Kong Skull Island led if into If Brie like Larson a, was inside a Mecha Godzilla suit and that'd be awesome. I, I didn't recognize her, that's not bad on me. I think that's the, how, the, was, how Room ends. That she's inside a Mecha Godzilla suit? No, I'm not, I haven't seen oh. Room. I know it's very sad. Well, she has a hard time of it, but then she perseveres. And gets out of the room. I think because of the Mecha Godzilla. Because she can, she asks her captor, "Can I have <laughs> a, <laughs> a a a servo motor?" I've been. She slowly asks for Slow, all the parts. Little, to be, little by little. <laughs> this is how Tony Stark escaped in, in the ex- first in Iron Man. In exchange for telling this guy she loves him and wants to have his kid, she asks for bit by bit the pieces mm-hmm. of a Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> and then he comes in and says, "You love me," and she's like, <laughs> "She goes all Mecha Godzilla on his." His ass. face is red. Yeah, because he's embarrassed that he's, he let yeah. this happen. Under it, when his he watch. when he's hanging out with the other um, girlfriend capturers, <laughs> like the the guild he's in. Yeah, the girlfriend capturing guild. It's like, <laughs> why don't why don't you get someone to like you by developing a nice personality and making it kind of a win-win for you and the girlfriend. Ah, yeah. I, I'm going to go with the underground dungeon room. <laughs> I, I hear I, what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense. But I, so, I, but I built this room. I built what, the what room. What do they call the you, when you invest so much in something? The sunk, sunk cost, cost The sunk fallacy. cost fallacy. This, that's, yeah. what this, that's what that – someone should explain that to that the guy and it would have really saved that. But then Brie Larson wouldn't have an Oscar. No, she wouldn't. So, whoa, whoa, ho, 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 ho. 
maybe she would have gotten an Oscar for something else. <laughs> for Kong Skull Island. <laughs> for something else. Yeah, for Kong Skull Island. KSI. Oh, maybe she was looking at the thing she was going to be in, and she's like, okay, Kong Skull Island, let's be honest. I'm not going to get an Oscar. That's a Golden Globe. I'm not, yeah, that's a Golden Globe Mm -hmm. at best. At best. So, team, we better shore up our year (laughs) with something that's a little more Oscar. Is there a movie I can shoot in one location in a day? And And they're they're, like, yes. And and they're like, so so we're looking at um, Brie Mothra. (laughs) And she's like, I I don't even think you were listening. (laughs) Mothra is the Oscar monster. Mothra is no more likely to receive an Oscar than Kong's gun. Honestly, less likely. Less likely. Less likely. <laughs> less and we're likely talking to get about golden popcorn at the yeah. MTV Movie Awards. Bree, we actually have you. We have a call if you want to play the new Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. <laughs> who, and who am I playing? Am I playing one of those Japanese twins? Yes. Well, that's not good either. That's not good either. <laughs> Uh, um, I didn't know they were going to come up, but when you said Mothra, I definitely thought about them. That's so crazy. Uh, okay, we've got a. What are we looking at on time here, Aristotle? Okay, this we're taking our second break. We took one earlier. I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know you had taken a break. That's fine. No, it's, right. it's a digital break. It's a digital break, not an analog break. All right, before we get into the games, we're going to play with. Oh, games. Uh, nice. We'll play, not with. We're going to play a few movie games here right. to wrap things up, but I want, before we get too mm-hmm. invested in those, since we're back from break, I want you to tell everyone about your podcast that, that is, is new here on Yes, I, I've, with with my friend Taylor Carmen, who's a philosophy professor, we have launched a podcast called Terrifying Questions and Why Not to Be Terrified by Them. It's a philosophy podcast, and each week we deal with a different terrifying question. Uh, for example, um, do only fools fall in love? Hmm. What do you think? No. No, maybe not. Maybe okay. not. But you could, you could <laughs> worry. Mean, I get nervous. Like, are we living in a simulation? Um, is this new chat GBT3 or chat, chat uh, large language learning models, are that going to make uh, us all doomed? So we deal with all kind of questions that uh, people um, – worry about and that we worry about mm-hmm. and we try to reach a point where you will be less terrified by them um like these big questions where you don't really have control over right right does is the self real you know is death the end all that kind of stuff so we we want to go into it using philosophy but philo- i feel strongly that um like kids can do philosophy like you don't need to it's not like physics or like you know something where you need a technical background it's really just just the willingness to face some questions that are are unsettling or hard to hard to grapple with so we're going to grapple with them on this podcast so so i hope i hope the uh the listeners will give it a try i think i think you'll enjoy it yeah go go check it out and we'll have a link, and it's on Starbucks. Oh, a link, you can find yeah. It the same way. Everyone knows how to find things. Yeah. You ever like tell everyone the quick? Everyone knows how to find things. Like when I'm like promoting shows, and I'm like, go to this very long URL I just read out. You know, like, just, you, you know where to find this stuff. Right, right. I don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> because after shows, people be like, "Oh man, let me follow you," and I'll be like, "Okay, my name is Rob Hayes, R O B H A Z E," and then I'll watch them type other names into Instagram. <laughs> it's like, I just spelled it. It's seven letters. It's real simple. And they're like, nope, they, they still heard. And if you type in Rob H-A, I bet you're the first person who pops up anyways. Sure. So they have to be like going out of their way to be, okay, so yeah. You know what? Uh, Wait, I'll send Rob, everyone a CD copy of the podcast. Are you are you a good speller? And my name, No, 100%. but just, how about just in general? <laughs> No, not really. Oh, okay, because I was thinking like, I have no like my name is is Eric E R I C, and I'll send people a letter and I'll sign it Eric. Also, my email address is Eric has Eric in it E R I C, and two thirds of the time I'll get something back E R I K, and I'm just sort of like it's it's such a simple task. Yeah, spell yeah. it the same way that I spelled yeah, it. You gotta yeah. be confident and, that and, you spelled it right, and you're good. So I think th- I was trying to model, come up with a mental model of it, and I think some people just they don't they don't spell like spelling is not part of the thing that they sure. do. Sure. <laughs> so I think they hear H A Z E, and they just lose it. 
<laughs> they're just like ah uh, spelling. This guy uh, doesn't know what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah, the first and letter than the last letter. I can't. Uh, I can't. Uh, H- <laughs> <laughs> Who put these in this order? Oh uh, well, actually, in the center of the earth, there's a lot of Rob Hayes. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you think there's more yeah. than one. I didn't mention, by the way, and, and I don't want to spoil this movie, but luckily I can't. If you got it from it's watching that great, it on mute, because it's spoil that it. great. <laughs> he's a king. He is a king down in that world, and he has a throne, and, and I think a crown. He has a throne. <laughs> he's got a throne. Okay, because he's King Kong. He's king. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not, not Donkey Kong. He's not or Donkey. Prince Kong. He's not yeah. Donkey Kong. He's not Vice President Kong. He is yeah. King Kong. You know? <laughs> Ambassador Kong yeah. was just too long for now, all the posters. Now, if it's a constitutional monarchy or not, again. Consult someone who watched right. it with the sound. <laughs> yeah. uh, that that person, if they exist, and I believe they do, <laughs> can answer all your. You con- know they do because they're sitting questions. next to you on the plane. Oh, they weren't watching it. It was one of those tiny little screens in the in the uh, in the chair. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. You never look at the other person's screen. I, I'm always oh, really? checking out everybody else's screen. And it's like, and, what you, and what is y'all it doing over there? Is it the proverbial? Little old light lady watching raunchy porn. Is that what happens? <laughs> no, nah, but it was, sometimes I I find out what is like other people found. Uh huh. You yeah. know, I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I've yeah. seen couples spend twenty minutes trying to sync up watching game night on a plane, like you know, because they want it on their two, so they're mm-hmm, listening at the mm-hmm. same time. Right, mm-hmm. right. But Why? The, every touch screen on like a plane is so old and touched. Yeah. That their touch response are not the same, uh-huh. and so they kept starting over and right. starting over because they would be a, if if you're watching a movie half second off from the person next to you, it's going to drive you both crazy because you can't help but like look ahead or look behind, and the sound is different. And right. they just kept trying and kept trying and kept trying, and then I think eventually uh, uh, just read. Well, they read like a book, books. so that's good. I wonder if I reading, can picture them trying to like is sync up reading at the same time yeah. too. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking back and forth on the Neil Gaiman novels they respectively have. Are you I, on page eight? I think those two people are 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 enmeshed. <laughs> I, I think they're enmeshed in their relationship, and and each of them needs to learn to to like have some spaces oh, in their yeah. togetherness. <laughs> I believe that the 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 sinking of the movies might be an example of codependency, like in yeah. a book about yeah. the, like therapy and couple yeah. therapy and stuff. Yeah. And if you sync it up, great. First try, great. If you want to really do it, headphone splitters are Hef- ten cents. Split up oh. the headphones. <laughs> and right. You can just both watch on one, one screen. One headphone, one screen. One that's, of you's in the, the middle. Move. Watch that one. Yeah. 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 If you can't share, then what are y'all doing? Yeah. You each got to have guess- your own screen and your own headphones <laughs> and your own headphones. If you guys jack- are out there listening to this podcast yeah. at the same time, or if one of you is three seconds ahead of the other <laughs> one, maybe pause your significant like, others. Like one of them could watch game night. And one of them could watch Shoah, and then the one who watched Game Night would be like, "Well, how did the Holocaust happen?" I can tell you, honey. I just watched that. And then the Shoah watcher would be like, "I'm kind of bummed out. Oh, I watched the funniest movie. I watched the funniest movie. I can cheer you up." <laughs> the guy, the person finishing Game Night, like, it just didn't teach me enough about the Holocaust. It didn't teach me about man's humanity <laughs> to man. And the person watching the show is like, "It was pretty deep, but I'm bummed out. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm excited about this uh, wedding we're going to anymore." <laughs> <laughs> I'll cheer you up. I'll cheer you up. Uh, there were some very amusing turns. It's a of good story. thing we're both here for each yeah, other. Yeah, we 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 got to get the benefit of two lives rather than trying to squash ourselves into but a that's single not they did. They Borg, really, really a marriage Borg. To sync it up, and the, yeah. it was the person in the window seat touching both screens at the same time mm-hmm. when I was in the aisle, yeah. and it's just a, uh, it's it, it's almost like they were pranking me. Yeah. Just try. Anyways, all right. Oh, yeah. We've got a couple games we're gonna play. Here oh, games, quick. cool. This first hey. game is a, a, a pretty new game here mm-hmm. on the podcast. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have a theme song yet, so oh. we'll just have to play. This is a song for a game without a song. Yeah, they're about to play a game without a song. This game is called Letterboxed. Uh-huh. Guessing game. The uh-huh. game. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Letterboxd, if, are you both familiar with I think Rob explained a little bit. It's like a, just a website where everyone gets to review movies, like social media no. for people reviewing movies. Even people who have no qualifications. No qualifications. Oh, really? Oh, that sounds and then potentially dangerous. It's, it's oh, but it is, uh, um, I don't, I don't watch enough, I don't 
It's what, anyways, why I'm not, I don't watch enough movies and I don't trust my writing enough. I don't think sure. what I say is important. Sure, sure, um, sure. But everyone reviews the movies and it can be long winded, spoiler filled, you know, like Ebert and Roper esque type of like things. Right, or it can right. just be like crazy. Crazy people. Like one okay. word. You know yeah. what I mean? Something huh. like that. Like terrific. Yes. Ah. And then the amount of stars. How yeah. this game works is I'm going to read you reviews. Okay. You have to guess what movie they're for. There's five reviews about the same movie. They get more and more specific, easier to guess. Oh, okay. But it's less and less points if you have to wait longer to I guess see. it. I see. So if you guess it after one review, that's five points. Right. Oh, well, now I understand that that gift area I, I walked through with all these products with points. Now I Okay, now I get yeah, it. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and the theme, <laughs> these are all Tom Hanks movies. Okay. So okay. I want to narrow it in a little okay, bit. Not okay. narrow it in. Felt they're a little Tom cool. Hanks movies. Um, so this now is... I watched a Tom Hanks movie recently, and I didn't know it was one until someone told me afterwards. What movie? Elvis. Oh yeah, that is Tom Hanks. He's in a ton. Mm-hmm. He's in as much. He's in as <laughs> as much makeup as Brie Larson star turn as Mega Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so here's five, you know, and, and here's the, the caveat. You're only allowed to guess once. Okay. So if you guess after one review and you're wrong, you don't get to guess on that movie I anymore. see. I okay. See. Um, so here we go. What Tom Hanks movie, this is, you can, or you can just wait a second. Though. Are we competing? I believe so. Oh, yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Here we go. Here we go. What right. Tom Hanks movie is this a review for? Finally, some good fucking food. Five stars. Hmm. All right. Here's for four points. Absolutely anyone in this movie could step on my neck. Five stars. Hmm. I have no idea. All right. For three. And I don't know what that means if, if the person is a masochist or just they're very large I people. I believe that. Oh, you think they're a masochist? Yes. I, I would, would, li- that, I would sexually be sexually driven. excited if they did it. Not that they could in the sense they're very large, <laughs> This hef- was hefty, actually. I didn't tell you Tom people. Hanks was in Pacific Rim. Oh, uh, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, that's the movie I was thinking with big things on I it. I love that movie. Uh, this movie is like reverse conversion therapy. Four stars. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so it now, makes you gay. It makes you. It makes you homosexual oh, wait, to watch okay. the movie. And snatching necks, I feel like that might be you like some, give it a guess? Some, some gay slang. Ah. Step on your neck. Step, Step on, on your neck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. For two points. The casting between the older and younger counterparts of each character is so oh. good. Oh, I bet I know what it is. What do you think it is? I think it's big. It is not big. Oh, I, now you have a free okay, reign. Rob, free okay. reign. Yeah. This one, this is for one point, and I think it... Sometimes a family is a group of baseball-playing lesbians and Tom Hanks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I should have Four waited. Oh, I man, should have which waited. Which Toy Story is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the League of Their All right, Own. One wow. point for Rob. I don't have a pen, so the score isn't going to matter, but one point for Rob. <laughs> wow. All right, here we go. This is also a Tom Hanks movie. If I had just waited. If you just, but then you have yeah. less points, you know? You well, want to go for that two point. Yeah. Here we go. What Tom Hanks movie is this for five points? Tom Hanks got to have one of the top five foreheads in Hollywood. Five oh, that stars. could be any of them. No, yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, yeah. For four points. I know some people give this movie so much shit, but it's so beautiful and wholesome, and it makes me happy. Four oh. and a half stars. Oh, interesting. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to guess. You want to guess? I'm gonna go with Forrest Gump. It is Forrest Gump. Wow. What yeah, a guess. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, running the board here. That's here we great. go. The other reviews for that Forrest Gump. That buzz cut, you know, puts the, the forehead on black. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt you watch in Philadelphia like, yeah, yeah but his forehead. I mean, yeah. I know he got other problems. There's no forehead in the But birds. the forehead. <laughs> yeah. Other reviews for, for Forrest Gump. Tag yourself. I'm the woman at the start who doesn't care about the story at all. Um, oh, which is interesting. a funny review. Interesting. Uh, movie couldn't happen now because everyone would have headphones in. Three uh-huh. stars. Uh-huh. And, uh, Three stars because it couldn't happen now, but that's true of so many movies. Uh, rather glad John Lennon wasn't alive to see his cameo in this. Three and a half oh. stars. <laughs> oh. Rather glad John Lennon wasn't alive is a dark thing to say. It is. Because yeah. he was murdered. I think it puts yeah. a red squiggly line under that whole phrase. I think so. Like, I, th- I don't think yeah, you should say this like You shouldn't this. say that. All mean. right. We got two more Tom Hanks movies. What Tom Hanks movie is this letterbox review for? Hmm. For five points. We did not ask for this, and we do not deserve it. Five huh. stars. Huh. Mm. For four points. 
the only thing, movie or otherwise, to ever have made my dad cry. Oh. Five stars. Interesting. Um, what's the name of the Tom Hanks movie where he's alone on the island with the dodgeball? Castaway? Castaway. I guess, I'm guess i guessing Castaway. It is not Castaway. Oh, no. That's a good guess, though. Is That's it, a dad cry movie if one so. has ever existed. You think so. Um, this, if you, <laughs> now I want to uh, apply the rest of these reviews to Castaway. I don't feel for that pink bitch. Five oh. stars. Pink bitch. Mm. Is it a literal pink bitch? Or is it, I wonder... I, is it Turner and Hooch? Is no, I Turner can't guess. I can't keep guess. guessing. I, know. I mean, what, guess, are the, what is the curtain to pull back yeah, here right. on that legitimacy of this? All right, for two points. I, too, have a deep and somewhat irrational fear of being rejected and forgotten. Huh? Four and a half stars. Being rejected and forgotten. Oh, my goodness. And here we go, the one-point review. Okay. The most disturbing thing about this film by far has to be the complete lack of adult supervision in a daycare. <laughs> Oh, I, I think I know what it is. Tom Hanks. No, you, you, you came close to it in a joke you made about two minutes ago. Okay. Let's see. I joked about. Rob, this is for a whole point. Oh, wait. Oh. Toy Story 2? Oh, three? Eric had a Toy Story uh, 3. It is Toy uh, Story 3. The pink bitch is that bear. Oh, oh the bear. What's his name? Lotso. Right. Lotso the bear. Toy Story 3 that is crushing. That was a sad one. Yeah, 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 yeah. The crying part had me in a whole nother section of Tom Hanks. Yeah, well, Dad Cry and Tom Hanks doesn't eliminate like any of them. That's confusing. It's confusing it's very, why very Dad. Young. Even I, amongst other Tom Hanks movies. I, Dad, a part of it seems like Dad is is a macho man mm -hmm. because he never cries. Yeah. But part of it makes it seem like dad is sort of a soft boy because he's watching a movie but for one children. But one of the things to remember is the dad could be 30. Uh -huh. And it could be like a 15-year-old or like 35 and a 15-year-old. Oh, right. Because Toy Story is very, like I'm 34. Right. And so it could be my kid who's 17 writing this right. review. Right, Who's just like, Toy Story 3 to a someone my age is like, I'm the age of the kid. It's a childish You know what film. I mean? I'm, yeah. the, I'm the same age of as Andy. Yeah. You know what's wild? We took my stepbrother to see Toy Story, and my dad did cry. <laughs> <laughs> that did happen. Why, why did he cry? In the first one? No, Toy Story 3. Wow. Why, why did yeah, he yeah, cry, yeah. do you think? Because it's sad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. You there's yeah. a I had, I cannot believe they convinced us the toys might die. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a real move by Pixar. That's like a tw no, first twenty like, minutes of up type of like emotional manipulation. Once you're going through that ride, you realize and you thinking about your toys. Yeah. You know, you no longer thinking about Buzz right. and Andy. I'm like, man, is that my crayon? Some dog slinky I never had a chance to obtain. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, once you that was copyright, about, you couldn't afford that. Yeah, you you thinking about all the toys that you had and like, what? Where are they now? <laughs> they, they never pop up. You never just walking down the street and be like, oh, that, that's my toy right there. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. that's gone. my uh, tiny Kansas City Royals helmet I got out of a vending machine. Oh, it didn't come with ice cream in it. No, a t oh. T tiny. Like, oh, oh, I see. You know, what like you mean. the fifty cent. Not one. enough ice cream. Um, no. Final Tom Hanks movie, Letterboxd mm -hmm. guessing game mm -hmm. again, right? Okay. For five points, mm -hmm. if you're enemies for more than like a year, you're not enemies. You're just gay. These five stars. This is a homophobic subtext. To some actually, of I think mm -hmm. it's like a very pro-gay. Oh, it's a pro-gay site. Okay, that's. Good. I actually think Letterboxd, and we talked about this beforehand, is like yeah. very. A lot of the reviews are driven by like queer youths great and so it's like a lot of like revisiting old movies like well but they're gay you know uh -huh. what i mean like a yeah. lot of like uh, yeah and then like like come on a yes. lot of like and they're so that's yes. what I say. if you're enemies for more than a year you're gay interesting um yeah. so it's something where tom hanks plays someone who's enemies with someone else for more than a year Five stars, because you and you can tell their like context, but their star amount I think can yeah, give you like the, oh, the I tone see. of what they mean I by see that. What Five you're stars, saying. yeah, that's helpful information. Here we go for four points. This is the best unconventional Christmas movie. Five stars. Oh, so there's 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 Christmas. Okay, in, but I'm it's a, not conventional. I'm gonna go Polar Express. It is not Polar. Not a bad guess, but it's not mm. Polar Express. Okay. Polar Express. The enemy is the animation making me feel yeah. uncomfortable. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the true enemy in that movie is the rendering that made me feel The weird. render farm. The yeah. render farm. Yeah. And the uh, shader. For three points. 
I give this movie five stars. Do you concur? Five stars. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh na- dang. So, so this is a movie where concurrence, the act of concurrence, is somehow integral to the world. For two points. Hmm. And to think, when I was this guy's age, I was posting Pretty Little Liars fan theories on <laughs> Tumblr. Hmm. Oh, Four man. stars. So it's about someone who does something heroic as a youth as a youth and uh final point for one point i didn't this one was either like there was hard to find ones that kind of gave this one away yeah. it was either like very here we go for one point watching this movie is how i feel when i forge my mom's signature on a <laughs> on a paper for my school huh three and a half stars i have no idea no idea rob did you get it i got it they talking about Frank Abagnale. It's it Catch, me, Catch if me If You Can. can. Oh, I Correct. saw that movie. Yeah. But I thought it had Leonardo DiCaprio it in it. It does, but Tom it Hanks does. is the cop. Tom Hanks is the oh, cop. Oh, I forgot cop. about that. Yeah. Okay. Tom Hanks no. is really hiding in a lot of movies for I you should, somehow. I like should have. Plain sight. Uh, I should have gotten that because I, that's a movie that I saw. But but why was concurrence an important when aspect he, It's of like a, one of the famous quotes. He's like, when he's pretending to be the doctor, he just keeps re-quoting the show he watched. And he's like asking people to concur with him over and wow. He's like, do you concur? And he's but like, do you concur? Yeah, because the kid has a broken leg. He's like, he said he broke his leg. Do you concur? And the guy's like, yeah, the bone is sticking out of the oh, leg. Okay. I concur. He's like, so you concur? I see. Yeah, okay. Uh, final game. Hmm. Final moments here on Never Seen It. We are going to play a game called Guess What Movie. Kyle's dad is describing having only watched the trailer and never having heard of the movie. Uh-huh. Did okay. the game. people see this? Okay. What, okay. that you ripped the label okay. off the bottle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I don't know. <laughs> I did that because in Catch Me If You Can, he kept doing that. That's putting right. The labels on. Oh, yeah. That's right. He was using the la- he. It made forging seem so easy. Yeah. Mm. You know how that movie makes Frank Abagnale look like a cool dude? Yeah. Gotti is a more extreme version of making someone look cool. Mm. If oh, I could just what relate do you, it to that. What do you think about Wolf of Wall Street? I think that a lot of people interpreted that as making that guy look cool, but I don't know if that was the intent. Oh, but, no. They, they but did. he does look pretty cool in go, that movie. Go watch the real Jordan Pilford talk on YouTube. Because he loves that movie. You'll see. You'll be like, oh, that's he a ain't good example. Leo. He ain't Leo at all. That's yeah. a good example. I would say that. <laughs> Gotti is is a similar heroism mm-hmm. as if Wolf of Wall Street didn't have the last twenty five minutes. Right, right. And he just ended with him and being with Margot Robbie. <laughs> right. And then that's how Gotti would end. He'd be like, "See, everything's tight if New right. York is a character or something yeah, like yeah, that." Yeah, he would say something baffling but um, sort of braggadocious. Yeah. So how this game works is my dad, who has not been to a movie theater in about 25 years. Right, because the floor is too sticky for his. <laughs> he yeah. just falls asleep in movie okay, theaters. Okay, sure. Uh, he watches a movie trailer, describes what's happening in that movie trailer. You have to guess what movie it's a trailer for. Right. Um, it can be any movie ever. Okay. No category here. And uh, if you know at any point, you can guess it at any point. Hmm. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, they're playing the game of life, a song on the jukebox. One guy has a broken arm. Maybe there was an earthquake. (laughs) Quick shots now. She's in a vent. Something is on fire. The older man seems very upset. Mm -hmm. The music did that movie trailer thing where it went from fun to really dramatic. She is running up the stairs towards the light. He's telling her not to open the door. It's quiet now. Something is coming. Shaky sounds. Hmm. Is it Barbarian? It is not Barbarian. This is a difficult one. Yeah. As I listen to it. Is it, um... What's that movie with the pizza? Hmm. Toy Story. No, it's like, it came out recently. It came out like last year. It's not that, but what movie are you talking about? I don't know. There was some kind of movie. Aristotle, you know what movie talking about? Does anyone know the pizza movie? Well, a lot of movies have pizza. 30 Minutes or Less? Yeah. Was that the movie with the Z's? No. It's, never mind. Okay. Big Night? Did they make a pizza in Big Night? Now I only want to know, like, the game has turned into what movie is Rob thinking about. What movie is Rob thinking? It's 
know. The, <laughs> yeah. the title has something to do with pizza. Licorice pizza? Licorice, licorice pizza. pizza. It's not yeah. that. Yeah, right. no. Have, do you have any idea what happens in licorice pizza? Or is this a movie I you're thinking about? I figured there's a jukebox in there somewhere. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I like that you're like three words in. You're like, this is the defining characteristic of the movie trailer. This is an expert level one. I, this is tough. All right. Here we go. I wonder if anyone actually guesses that we're looking for 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, okay, sure. 10 Cloverfield Lane. So it did have Godzilla in it. I was going to make <laughs> It's sort of kind of I was going to make a joke that it clearly wasn't <laughs> Kong Skull Island, but both movies have Godzilla. But it almost was. Yeah. Um yeah. All right, we'll do one more of this. We'll do one more Kyle Dad guessing Dad trailer. Here we go. Okay. Horses in a buggy running through the snow. Mm. He's dramatically lifting his head. Mm. Looks like they're all in the buggy now. Very cool music. Lots of clanking sounds. Everyone is in warm hats. When he catches you, you hang. Mm. The snow is terrible. Everyone keeps introducing each other with nicknames and stuff. A lot of odd, big facial hair. Fun is under the table. If you move strange, you get a bullet. No warnings. Tons of quick shots. Western guns. Oh, people I think I know laughing. This. Everyone seems tense. You need to see it in Panavision. Oh, I think I know this. Apparently. What is it? It's Despicable Eight. Uh, Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. Same, yeah. Yes, it is. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. That was a good get. I'm glad I wasn't entirely swept by the game round of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the Letterbox game is tough. I'm trying to find the good medium there. Mm -hmm. It's a very new game. Um, Eric, thank you for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having never seen Yellow Jackets. Oh, you're welcome. Um, but, you know, remind everyone again about the podcast name, where oh, yeah. it's on all the things, I it think. Is, it is uh, Terrifying Questions and How Not to Be Terrified by Them, uh, me and Taylor Carmen, and it's on uh, uh, Amazon Music. It's on all the podcast places, including the Starburns podcast place. Great. And, you know, Starburns website will link you out to wherever yeah, you will. listen to them if you're looking. Uh, is there anything else you want to let people know about? Oh, is there anything else I want to let people know about? Um. Uh, no. Great, <laughs> Rob. Let everyone know uh, how to almost follow you on Instagram. Yeah, uh, I'm at Rob Hayes on everything now on Twitter, on Instagram, on uh, Venmo, uh, R O B H A Z E, and uh, our I listeners are going to accidentally Venmo some other Rob a bunch of money just <laughs> right. for fun. Yeah, right. yeah. Um. And I am uh, I have my own podcast called The Inconsistent Podcast with Rob Hayes. Uh, it's not about anything. It's just super inconsistent. It comes out whenever it's ready. Great. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you guys very much uh, for listening. Uh, you know, we're on Discord. If you want to hang out with other fans of the podcast, go to fart.kyleairs.com. It'll take you there. We got a bunch of uh, new Never Seen It mashup before and after stickers on kyleairs.com as well. And thank you very much for listening. Everyone have a wonderful day. I've never seen it.